Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Everything OneNote. Today I'm going to talk to you about the collab space and collab space permissions and show you how you can set up some strategic group work within the collab space that is only sectioned off to those specific students. Um, as OneNote, as student having their private sections, a lot of the work is generally sent out is individual. So it's a nice and simple and very cool way to integrate some group work into your OneNote practice. So I'm just going to go through and show you how to first set up the collab space permissions and then I'm going to show you a couple of examples of how that looks and sometimes I've used it previously in classes. So here I am in my uh, mock class, my demo class with my four wonderful students that you might have seen in other videos. So I'm going to go through and I've got the top here, I'm going to click on class notebook. So the collaboration space, if you are new to the club space, it is an area where um, students can all type into the same space and they can all collaboratively work together. The problem with it, problem with it is it can get messy and students can often go crazy. Um, so often steer away from using it sometimes just because of lack of control. Um, but creating these collab space missions is a really cool way to have some control within the collab space. So again, if I'm up here, class notebook, and then you're gonna look for the manage notebook. So that should open up a little pop-up window within your OneNote. Oh, it's gonna ask me to sign in. Got that right, so I'm gonna quickly sign in. And I now have this option that has manage notebooks. Okay, and I'm just gonna make that a little bit bigger so we can all see it. Now it has my student sections. So this is just another place where I can go in and add another student section if I want. There's a couple of ways I could do that. I could do that in Teams if I'm set up with a class notebook and I could also do it from one, I could distribute a section, but just another place I could do that. But it's also another place where I could rename a section. So for example, if this assessment folder I created initially, but now I don't really want that assessment folder or I wanna rename it to something else, this will actually rename it and it'll rename it for all the students. So that's a really cool place to go in if you want to edit or rename your most student sections. Teach only section, you can see that's already enabled. If it's not, that's a place where you can enable it. I can lock or unlock the collaboration space, which is a cool feature. Um, and what I want is this collab space permissions options. So when I hit that, it's going to open up a new little pop-up window and I'm going to have the option to add a section. So when I create a section, it might be, so you can set these up however you want. It could be group one, group two, group A, could be colors, red, green, blue. Doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna set up by group one. And now I'm gonna choose the students that I wanna be in that group. So these are the students who are gonna have access to that folder. So I'm gonna choose Nathan and Jesse. And down the bottom here, I have give read only access to students in the class, even if they're not in the group. So if I wanna, if I tick that, that's going to mean that every student can see all of the different groups, but only their group is editable. The other groups are read only. I generally turn it off just to make things simpler. So they only have, they can only see their group. They can't see the other groups. But if you have a need where you obviously want that sharing or inspiration across different groups, you want the kids to be able to read or look at other groups work without having the ability to edit or delete or mess it up, then by all means tick that. Um, I'm going to leave it untick and I'm going to hit create. So that's now gonna create a private section in the collaboration space for Nathan and Jesse to work together on each of their devices. They can both work at the same time. Um, so you can see now that's created, I've got group one, I can see I've got two students. Now if I wanna edit that and go in and add another student in it, I can by hitting that little pencil, but I'm gonna hit another one and because I've only got two students, I'm just gonna hit group two. I'm gonna add Matthew and Troy to that one. Now I could add, Nathan to multiple groups or Jesse to multiple groups if I felt the need to do that. And I'm gonna hit create again. So I'm now, I've got two sections within the collaboration space, one that's locked off to Nathan and Jesse and one that's locked off to Matthew and Troy, okay? So you, there you see, and that's essentially how you do it. Now it does involve a little bit of stuff. That was obviously four students. When you're working with 25, 30 students, it can get a bit more complicated and maybe five, 10 minutes to set it up but um, I feel like the rewards are very much worth it later on. Um, these can be groups that you can have for the entire term or the entire year. And you can just quickly throw work into there and all right guys, get into, could be literacy groups. You can have groups set up for 
numeracy. It could be groups set up for just specific group work. Um, and you can strategically set those groups up. So it could be pairing, obviously, stronger students with weaker students. Um, it could be sort of pulling some of your stronger students together and some of your weaker students together. And you maybe know that the students where the weaker students are, are the ones that are going to need a bit more help. So you're going to maybe focus a bit more of your attention with those groups while some of the better groups are able to fly and sort of do their own thing on their own. So I'm going to hit close there. And we're going to go back to our OneNote. Now, it's not going to pop up straight away. It does take a few minutes to actually sing. But eventually, I'm going to get a section, two sections here called Group 1 and Group 2 that will only have um, access to those students that I've allocated to do. I'm going to try hitting sync. But while I do that, I'm going to go in and show you um, some examples that I've already created. So if I go back to our Everything OneNote, OneNote, and head down to the Collab Space. So here is some examples. That's just how to create the Collab Space permissions. We've already done that. Um, so I created some assignment groups and I named them by names. So that was just easier for me to be able to track and remember who was in each group. But it's a place that the students can then work together to do a bit of drafting, do a bit of collaborating and working together. This was for a, I think a year nine business where they had to create a product. So you look at, we've got like the four Ps here, a SWOT analysis. So they're able to work together collaboratively in the same space. So I can then easily as a teacher, also very quickly go through and check how each group and each um, students are doing. It does come up with initials for who writes what, but it's not foolproof. If I go in and edit someone's work, then you know my initials will pop up next to it. Um, so that's one example of assignments groups. Um, and you can also have learning teams. Like I said, these were some groups. These are only some of the groups that were strategically put together with different levels of students put together in different groups. Um, and then every time you want to do a new worksheet, you have to manually go in and drop it in there, but I'll just copy and paste a new worksheet into those um, different collab space permissions folders. And then the students can go in and can work on that together. So there you go. Very quick um, way to integrate some group work into your OneNotes using the collab space permissions. So just a quick recap, you hit class notebook, manage notebooks and go through and set that up. Um, obviously get the kids when you create it, get the kids to double check for you, especially if you're locking them off to only that one folder that they should only have one folder. Um, cause sometimes you'll make a mistake and one kid will have no folders or one kid will have two folders. Um, so just make sure you check with the kids as you go in that you've set it all up correctly. And when you go on, want to go and fix that up, exact same space, manage notebooks, hit that little pencil to edit that group and either delete or add the students that need to be added or deleted. All right, that's it for today. Looking at the collaboration space and integrating some group work into your OneNotes.